North Africa, Wikipedia article audio. North Africa is a collective term for a group of Mediterranean countries situated in the northernmost region of the African continent. The term North Africa has no single accepted definition. It is sometimes defined as stretching from the Atlantic shores of Morocco in the west, to the Suez Canal and the Red Sea in the east. Others have limited it to the countries of Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia, a region known by the French during colonial times as Afrique du Nord and by the Arabs as the Maghreb. The most commonly accepted definition includes Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia, as well as Libya and Egypt. North Africa, particularly when used in North Africa and the Middle East, often refers only to the countries of the Maghreb and Libya. Egypt, due to its greater Middle Eastern associations, is often considered separately. The U.S. Census define North Africa as Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia. Geography Definitions People Culture History Early History Antiquity and Ancient Rome Arab Conquest to Modern Times Transport and Industry Notes The countries of North Africa share a common ethnic, cultural, and linguistic identity that is unique to this region. The original inhabitants of North Africa are the Berbers and the Egyptians. Between the AD 600s and 1000s, Arabs from the Middle East swept across the region in a wave of Muslim conquest. These peoples, physically quite similar, formed a single population in many areas, as Berbers and Egyptians merged into Arab society. This process of Arabization and Islamization has defined the cultural landscape of North Africa ever since. The distinction between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa is historically and ecologically significant because of the effective barrier created by the Sahara Desert for much of modern history. The Sahara is the dominant feature of the North African landscape, and stretches across the southern part of the region. The Sahara serves as a geographical boundary between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and marks a transition zone from the largely Arab population of North Africa to Black Africa of the South. From 3500 BC, following the abrupt desertification of the Sahara due to gradual changes in the Earth's orbit, this barrier has culturally separated the North from the rest of the continent. The overwhelming majority of the North African population is concentrated along the Mediterranean and Atlantic coastlines and the Nile River, while the Sahara Desert is one of the most sparsely populated places on Earth. The Sahara Desert has therefore played an important role in the history of North Africa. As the seafaring civilizations of the Phoenicians, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, and others facilitated communication and migration across the Mediterranean Sea, the cultures of North Africa became much more closely tied to southwestern Asia and Europe than sub-Saharan Africa. The Islamic influence in the area is also significant, and North Africa is a major part of the Muslim world. Some researchers have postulated that North Africa rather than East Africa served as the exit point for the modern humans who first trekked out of the continent in the out-of-Africa migration. North Africa has three main geographic features, the Sahara Desert in the south, the Atlas Mountains in the west, and the Nile River and Delta in the east. The Atlas Mountains extend across much of northern Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia. These mountains are part of the Fold Mountain system that also runs through much of southern Europe. They recede to the south and east, becoming a steppe landscape before meeting the Sahara Desert, which covers more than 75% of the region. 
The tallest peaks are in the high Atlas Range in south-central Morocco, which has many snow-capped peaks. South of the Atlas Mountains is the dry and barren expanse of the Sahara Desert, which is the largest sand desert in the world. In places the desert is cut by irregular watercourses called wadis streams that flow only after rainfalls but are usually dry. The Sahara's major landforms include ergs, large seas of sand that sometimes form into huge dunes, the Hamada, a level rocky plateau without soil or sand, and the Reg, a level plain of gravel or small stones. The Sahara covers the southern part of Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia, and most of Libya. Only two regions of Libya are outside the desert, Tripolitania in the northwest and Cyrenaica in the northeast. Most of Egypt is also desert, with the exception of the Nile River and the irrigated land along its banks. The Nile Valley forms a narrow fertile thread that runs along the length of the country. Sheltered valleys in the Atlas Mountains, the Nile Valley and Delta, and the Mediterranean coast are the main sources of fertile farming land. A wide variety of valuable crops including cereals, rice, and cotton, and woods such as cedar and cork, are grown. Typical Mediterranean crops, such as olives, figs, dates, and citrus fruits, also thrive in these areas. The Nile Valley is particularly fertile, and most of the population in Egypt live close to the river. Elsewhere, irrigation is essential to improve crop yields on the desert margins. Source In addition to the five countries listed above, Sudan and Western Sahara are considered to be part of the region by the United Nations while Western Sahara and Mauritania are included by the African Union. North Africa is sometimes grouped with the Middle East under the acronym MENA or the geopolitical term Greater Middle East. Similarly, the traditional Arabic toponym Maghrib is commonly used to mean the African part of the Arab world, though usually with the exclusion of Egypt. The inhabitants of the Spanish Canary Islands are of mixed Spanish and North African Berber ancestry, and the people of Malta are of North African ancestry and speak a derivative of Arabic. But these areas are not generally considered part of North Africa, but rather Southern Europe, due to their European-based cultures and religion. The inhabitants of North Africa are roughly divided in a manner corresponding to the principal geographic regions of North Africa, the Maghrib, the Nile Valley, and the Sahel. The Maghrib or Western North Africa on the whole is believed to have been inhabited by Berbers since at least 10,000 BC, while the eastern part of North Africa or the Nile Valley has mainly been home to the Egyptians. Ancient Egyptians record extensive contact in their western desert with people that appear to have been Berber or Proto-Berber, as well as Nubians to the south. As the Tassili and Najer and other rock art findings in the Sahara have shown, the Sahara also hosted various populations before its rapid desertification in 3500 BC and even today continues to host small populations of nomadic trans-Saharan peoples. In the 11th century, the Banu Hilal invaded the North African plains and plateaus, but not the mountains or auras and brought with them Hilalian dialects of Arabic which over the centuries have been in significant contact with other languages, including the languages of Europe. They have contributed to the Arabized Berber populations. The official language or one of the official languages in all of the countries in North Africa is Arabic. Today, the largest ethnic groups in North Africa are Arabs, Berbers, and West Africa's. The region is predominantly Muslim with a Jewish minority in Morocco and Tunisia and significant Christian minority the Copts in Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. 
The people of the Maghreb and the Sahara regions speak Berber languages and several varieties of Arabic and almost exclusively follow Islam. The Arabic and Berber languages are distantly related, both being members of the Afro-Asiatic language family. The Tuareg Berber languages are notably more conservative than those of the coastal cities. Over the years, Berbers have been influenced by contact with other cultures, Greeks, Phoenicians, Egyptians, Romans, Vandals, Arabs, Europeans, and Sub-Saharan Africans. The cultures of the Maghreb and the Sahara therefore combine indigenous Berber, Arab, and elements from neighboring parts of Africa and beyond. In the Sahara, the distinction between sedentary oasis inhabitants and nomadic Bedouins and Tuaregs is particularly marked. The diverse peoples of North Africa are usually categorized along ethno-linguistic lines. In the Maghrib, where Arab and Berber identities are often integrated, these lines can be blurred. Some Berber-speaking North Africans may identify as Arab depending on the social and political circumstances, although substantial numbers of Berbers have retained a distinct cultural identity which in the 20th century has been expressed as a clear ethnic identification with Berber history and language. Arabic-speaking Northwest Africans, regardless of ethnic background, often identify with Arab history and culture and may share a common vision with other Arabs. This, however, may or may not exclude pride in an identification with Berber and slash or other parts of their heritage. Berber political and cultural activists for their part, often referred to as Berberists, may view all Northwest Africans as principally Berber, whether they are primarily Berber or Arabic-speaking. Egyptians over the centuries have shifted their language from Egyptian to modern Egyptian Arabic while retaining a sense of national identity that has historically set them apart from other people in the region. Most Egyptians are Sunni Muslim, although there is a significant minority of Copts. The Maghreb formerly had a significant Jewish population, almost all of whom emigrated to France or Israel when the North African nations gained independence. Prior to the modern establishment of Israel, there were about 600,000 to 700,000 Jews in northern Africa, including both Sephardi Jews as well as indigenous Mizrahi Jews. Today, less than 15,000 remain in the region, almost all in Morocco and Tunisia and are mostly part of a French-speaking urban elite. Due to the recent African origin of modern humans, the history of prehistoric North Africa is important to the understanding of pre-hominid and early modern human history in Africa. The earliest inhabitants of central North Africa have left behind significant remains, early remnants of hominid occupation in North Africa, for example, were found in An el Hainuk, near Seda. In fact, more recent investigations have found signs of Old Awan technology there, and indicate a date of up to 1.8 million BC. The cave paintings found at Tassili Anajar, north of Taman Rasset, Algeria, and at other locations depict vibrant and vivid scenes of everyday life in central North Africa during the Neolithic subpluvial period. Some parts of North Africa began to participate in the Neolithic Revolution in the 6th millennium BC, just before the rapid desertification of the Sahara around 3500 BC due to a tilt in the Earth's orbit. While Egypt due to the early civilizations of ancient Egypt entered historicity by the Bronze Age, the Maghreb remained in the prehistoric period longer. Some Phoenician and Greek colonies were established along the Mediterranean coast during the 7th century BC. The most notable nations of antiquity in western North Africa are Carthage and Numidia. The Phoenicians colonized much of North Africa including Carthage and parts of present-day Morocco. 
The Carthaginians were of Phoenician origin, with the Roman myth of their origin being that Dido, a Phoenician princess, was granted land by a local ruler based on how much land she could cover with a piece of cowhide. She ingeniously devised a method to extend the cowhide to a high proportion, thus gaining a large territory. She was also rejected by the Trojan prince Aeneas according to Virgil, thus creating a historical enmity between Carthage and Rome, as Aeneas would eventually lay the foundations for Rome. Ancient Carthage was a commercial power and had a strong navy, but relied on mercenaries for land soldiers. The Carthaginians developed an empire in the Iberian Peninsula and Sicily, the latter being the cause of First Punic War with the Romans. Over a hundred years and more, all Carthaginian territory was eventually conquered by the Romans, resulting in the Carthaginian North African territories becoming the Roman province of Africa in 146 BC. This led to tension and eventually conflict between Numidia and Rome. The Numidian Wars are notable for launching the careers of both Gaius Marius and Sulla and stretching the constitutional burden of the Roman Republic, as Marius required a professional army, something previously contrary to Roman values to overcome the talented military leader Jugurtha. North Africa remained a part of the Roman Empire, which produced many notable citizens such as Augustine of Hippo until incompetent leadership from Roman commanders in the early 5th century allowed the Germanic peoples, the Vandals, to cross the Strait of Gibraltar, whereupon they overcame the fickle Roman defence. The loss of North Africa is considered a pinnacle point in the fall of the Western Roman Empire as Africa had previously been an important grain province that maintained Roman prosperity despite the barbarian incursions and the wealth required to create new armies. The issue of regaining North Africa became paramount to the Western Empire, but was frustrated by Vandal victories. The focus of Roman energy had to be on the emerging threat of the Huns. In 468 AD, the Romans made one last serious attempt to invade North Africa but were repelled. This perhaps marks the point of terminal decline for the Western Roman Empire. The last Roman emperor was deposed in 476 by the Heruli general Odoacer. Trade routes between Europe and North Africa remained intact until the coming of Islam. Some Berbers were members of the early African Church, some were Berber Jews, and some adhered to traditional Berber religion. African Pope Victor I served during the reign of Roman Emperor Septimius Severus. The early Muslim conquests included North Africa by 640. By 670, most of North Africa had come under Muslim rule. Indigenous Berbers subsequently started to form their own polities in response in places such as Fez and Sigil Mesa. In the 11th century, a reformist movement made up of members that called themselves the Almoravid dynasty expanded south into sub-Saharan Africa. North Africa's populous and flourishing civilization collapsed after exhausting its resources in internal fighting and suffering devastation from the invasion of the Banu Sulaym and Banu Hilal. IBN Khaldun noted that the lands ravaged by Banu Hilal invaders had become completely arid desert. After the Middle Ages the area was loosely under the control of the Ottoman Empire, except Morocco. The Spanish Empire conquered several coastal cities between the 16th and 18th centuries. After the 19th century, the imperial and colonial presence of France, the United Kingdom, Spain, and Italy left the entirety of the region under one form of European occupation. In World War II from 1940 to 1943 the area was the setting for the North African Campaign. 
During the 1950s and 1960s all of the North African states gained independence. There remains a dispute over Western Sahara between Morocco and the Algerian-backed Polisario Front. The World Bank In 2010-2011 massive protests swept the region leading to the overthrow of the governments in Tunisia and Egypt, as well as civil war in Libya. Large protests also occurred in Algeria and Morocco to a lesser extent. Many hundreds died in the uprisings. The economies of Algeria and Libya were transformed by the discovery of oil and natural gas reserves in the deserts. Morocco's major exports are phosphates and agricultural produce, and as in Egypt and Tunisia, the tourist industry is essential to the economy. Egypt has the most varied industrial base, importing technology to develop electronics and engineering industries, and maintaining the reputation of its high-quality cotton textiles. Oil rigs are scattered throughout the deserts of Libya and Algeria. Libyan oil is especially prized because of its low sulfur content, which means it produces much less pollution than other fuel oils.